One evening, Thomas brought his last train to the junction. Percy was glad to see him. Are you on your way to the big station, Thomas? Yes, I am. Why? Because I'm going there, too. I think something's up. Toby looked up at the sky. Where? Not up there. Down here, laughed Thomas. How can something be up when it's down? Thomas was too excited to explain. Bust my buffers. Look over there. Mavis, Boko, Bill, Ben, Donald, Oliver, and Douglas paraded past. Good evening, you three, whistled Donald. Aren't we all a fine sight? Very splendid indeed, admired Toby. Sorry we can't stop. Sir Topham Hat wants us all together at the station. What is this about, asked Thomas. Sir Topham Hat has a plan, answered his driver. Come on. So they followed the other engines to the big station at the end of the line. Silence, called Sir Topham Hatt. I have an important letter to read from a little girl who is five years old. Dear Thomas and all the engines, please, can I meet you? My friends say they would like to meet you too. You could come to my house for tea, but my mummy says there aren't any railway tracks to my house. Can you come to the station instead? Thank you very much. It seems, continued Sir Topham Hatt, that there are many girls and boys who would like to meet you. Therefore, we are all going to the big city far away. Hooray! Hooray! The engines whistled. Silence! Other engines will be working here while you are away, so please show them what to do. As Annie and Clarabel were going to the big city too, Thomas and Oliver practiced with some other coaches. Thomas grew more and more excited. Too excited for his own good. I'm glad I'm a splendid engine, he puffed. Sir Topham Hatt thinks I'm really useful. I had a race with Bertie once. I whooshed through the tunnel and stopped an inch from the buffers. Then Thomas made his mistake. Just like this, he boasted. No one was hurt, but Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned to Sir Topham Hatt. I'll send up the workmen, he said. But if they can't mend Thomas in time, we'll have to go to the big city without him. Poor Thomas. Eight o'clock next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on a truck, and Duck had pushed them into place behind Edward. Gordon, James, and Henry were waiting to lead off. They whistled impatiently. Sir Topham Hatt looked at his watch. I'll wait one more minute for Thomas, then we have to go. Oh, thank goodness you're still here, panted Thomas. I hope we're not late, as it's just after eight. The conductor blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines cheered. Look out, big city, here we come. And the cavalcade puffed away. Later in the big city, all the engines were lined up in a splendid shed. The children were delighted to meet their friends. I'm glad the little girl wrote to us, whispered Thomas to Percy. Isn't it wonderful what happiness a letter can bring? 